And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. When it comes to Radis, I'm going to show you the box first and not the board, because if you saw the board, you see a map of Europe and you see wooden cubes and you're going to throw the box. You're going to throw the box and you're going to run screaming. Now, don't do that with Radis. Yeah, okay, it's okay. Uh, you don't do that with Radis because actually the game is interesting. It may not look so fascinating on the Outbreak. Outbreak being that this game is about the Black Plague. Now, that's not necessarily the most joyful of themes, especially in this game, you're trying to have your population survive and edge other people out. And by edge, I mean, you know, literally try to take them out of the equation. Okay, that's kind of a dark theme. So if that, if that gets to you, then just pretend it's wooden cubes on a map. It's, a, it's an interesting idea, certainly a unique theme. Let's take a look at it. So here's the board which shows a map of Europe and at the beginning of the game you put a rat token uh, in each of the different areas. Some of the areas are unused in a three or four player game and then each player puts out some cubes showing population. And the goal of this game is very simple. At the end of the game you want to have the most cubes on the board. You want to have the most population. But they're going to be killed off all over the place and you have to be careful this plague is just going to ravage all these regions. So on a player's turn, it, it's pretty simple. You have a couple things that you can do. First of all, you get to take one of these rolls at the top of the board. So I might take, for example, the witch roll, or I might take, example, the, the emperor roll. It doesn't really matter which roll I take. Uh, and if another player has one, I can take the roll from that player. So you can have three, four, you can have all six rolls in front of you. I'm not sure I've ever seen that happen. But there is a disadvantage to having all the rolls in front of you, and we'll explain that in a moment. After you take one of the rolls, then you are allowed to add a cubes to one region on the board. The amount of cubes that you are allowed to add to a region is equal to the number of rat tokens in a region. So for example, this region has one rat token, I could add a cube there. But if it had two, I could add two cubes. If it had none, I can't add any cubes to that region. And again, this is an important part of the game because I'm trying to get as many cubes on the board as I possibly can. After that, then, I must, 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 must take the plague token here that starts the board somewhere and move that plague token to an adjacent spot. There's arrows that show adjacency. So when I move the plague to a spot, at that point in time, the rats are going to spread. If there's one rat token in a spot, then I'll pull from my pile of rat tokens over here and I place a rat token in any adjacent region. If there had been two rat tokens, let's say I moved here, then I'd put two, either two in one adjacent region or one in two different regions, it doesn't matter. After I add the additional rats, we turn over the rat token here and we do whatever it says. First of all, we see that if anyone's even injured, so this is two plus, that means there needs to be at least two cubes there. Well, lo and behold, there are two cubes there. There's four. So this plague does work. Who does it kill? Well, it kills the person who has these symbols of the different roles that they may have taken. Notice the first symbol there is a shield. So if either the red or the blue player had the knight in front of them, they would lose a cube. If either the players had the merchant here with the coin symbol, they would lose a cube. And the final one is that they either one has the peasant role, then they would lose a cube. And some of the tokens uh, will we'll have other things happen. For example, if there's an M there, that means the person with the majority loses the cube. And sometimes there's an A there, which means everybody loses the cube. So you can see that the rolls can be very deadly to have. So after cubes are pulled from the board, then it's the next person's turn. And we continue thus and thus until the end of the game, uh, which happens when all the rat tokens are depleted or if someone manages to get all their cubes on the board. At that point, we turn over all leftover rat tokens on the board, and we any plagues which happen, happen, and the cubes are removed from the board, and whoever has most cubes on the board wins. All right, let's real quick talk about the rolls, because that's kind of the meat of the game. Why would you take such a thing that would harm you? Because they're so handy. The king here lets you take one of your cubes uh, and put it into the castle over here. That cube is safe from the plague for the rest of the game. 
So that's really handy to do. So the king you can, is someone who is often taken early on. In fact, so is the peasant, because the peasant lets you add an extra cube on the board. He's often one of the first ones I've seen taken. So if there's one rat token in an area, instead of putting one cube, I can put two. If there's two rat tokens, I can put three. The knight lets you move the plague token two spaces, and it also allows you to, that plague token can count as two cubes if you want it to, uh, so for purposes, so I turn this over and it says five plus, but there's only two cubes there. I add two more, makes four. Still not enough to kill the things there, but if this had been, this token had been in there, the three plus, then it would have worked, and those people would not have been safe regardless. The merchant lets you move your cubes from one region to another region. The priest lets you move a rat token to an adjacent region. And the witch lets you look at a rat token, or two rat tokens, and if you want to, you can switch them. So all these rolls have different things, and you can manipulate it so that your people are not the ones to die. Raddus is a quick, simple game, and, 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 and that's good, because the game like this would probably be tedious if it was much longer. But it's, it's fast, and, and the game only takes about 30 minutes to play, something I very much enjoy about it. Uh, the, you have to realize, though, going into this, that this game is, is a mean little sucker. You are attacking each other. You're constantly going to be moving to play token in other people's regions, uh, doing whatever you can, moving rats in other people's regions, moving to play, you know, adding a lot of cubes and then getting them out of dodge so that, you know, the other person's going to get slammed. You can't go into this ready to get your feelings hurt because people are going to attack you. It's going to happen. The meat of this game is, of course, the rolls, the adding the different, you know, knowing when to utilize these. You don't want too many of them because you're going to get nailed by the plague. I but at the same time, they're so useful, you cannot help but want them. You know, getting that cube into the safe zone from the king, moving extra cubes, using the knight to hurt other players. It's all, you know, lots of fun. And if there's any negative thing I might say about the game, it's that, you know, they might get boring after a while, these roles. But fortunately, there is an expansion that adds uh, many more roles. In fact, I'm releasing my review of that at the same time as this one, so you can check that out. And so that's, to me, almost not a necessity. Well, maybe so. I would get both of them together. But it, it's it's a lot of fun, uh, quick and I'm not not sure sure the theme is you know it, it seems kind of odd to be taking joy in killing thousands of people. But in in this sense, I'm kind of glad the game is abstract. It's just cubes you're removing off the board, putting cubes on. And I'm not a big cube person. And you know don't be fooled by the fact that it's a map of Europe. It's not as boring as those other games that you normally see like that. Uh, this one actually is a lot of fun, and I can highly recommend it. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.